everyone. We're here with uh, Coach Massey, Winston-Salem State uh, football coach. Coach, you guys got through 10 practices before COVID kind of came in and got you guys. But what, what do you think you accomplished the most in those, uh, in those 10 practices? Well, there's a few things, believe it or not. One, we got out of there relatively healthy. Uh, but my biggest thing was because we had been away from the game for so long, my biggest fear was the conditioning factor. Up until from February 1st, up until this point, we had been doing morning conditioning, strength and conditioning, lifting and running, and things of that nature. So we were kind of headed in the right direction. Uh, once we hit the field, we started doing more football skill type movements and eventually branched off to one-on-one. -on -one. So I like the fact that we look pretty good as a unit in terms of conditioning. So we're getting back the conditioning, football conditioning that we'll need. And uh, the thing that I'll probably miss is we didn't do as much contact as I would have liked, but I thought we got a chance to see guys move around, fly around, enjoy it. They showed that they missed it. So, you know, we're happy with what we saw. And uh, along those same lines of contact, I guess that's less injuries, though. I know Dominique Graves was really your only significant injury, I guess, with that, that pinky finger. Yeah, and, and that comes from guys just being a little – overexcited about getting a chance to rush the passer and, and they running across in, the, in his hand, hit the guy. So, uh, but again, when we start talking about injuries, I know that's a guy that we're depending on and we're counting on, but you know, he'll be ready to go by the time we get to spring, excuse me, by the time we get to fall ball. So I feel good that minus Dom's injury, we came out relatively healthy. And I know Cameron Lewis did some good things. Um, Cameron Smith, the quarterback's coach mentioned that, you know, he like he likes the quarterback room. You got, you know, him and Tyler and, and Dominique Graves. I mean, that's some deep quarterbacks there. Well, that's a good problem to have. And I, and I think at the college level, you definitely need that. And, you know, in the NFL, a lot of times, you know, if you got that franchise quarterback, he'll play until he can't play. But in our case, you know, we still have competition going on. Uh, Tyler Smith showed that he's very capable of running the offense as well as Cameron. And, of course, Dom is the front runner right now going into camp. And what do you think, too, with the running backs? You guys lost all your stable of running backs. Uh, way back in 2019, but who are some of the guys that you like uh, at that position going into the fall? Well, freshman-wise, the one that really stood out was Andrew Hayes, um, you know, kid out of Durham, Jordan. He showed a great deal of speed, more speed than I actually thought he had, you know, which is a good thing. Uh, of course, we, we got a transfer come in, Cameron Davis out of uh, from uh, Campbell University, and he's just shown some some maturity, guys, good ball player, undersized guy, but he's put together. And without big line, that's what you want. You got to kind of hide, get behind the lines, and then once he get out there in the open field, he'll have a chance to show his speed. And Jonathan Smith was a guy who came from Mount Airy. He was a true freshman yeah. and hadn't played. Is he still kind of in, in the mix, too? Well, Jonathan in the mix, yeah, but he's coming along. You know, and some of those guys are, you know, this is really new to some of these freshmen. Right. Because we were doing a lot of uh, uh, a lot of conditioning. So I think that was kind of one of the things that had a lot of those guys on the back burner, uh, you know, with shin splints, things of that nature, just learning how to run. So, uh, you know, and they, they missed some time, but, you know, he's also a guy that flashed. And I know your offensive line is going to be pretty, you know, user friendly, as in a lot of guys that are back that, that, that will be their familiar names. I guess wide receiver wise, though, you got a couple of new guys and transfers that, that you like. Well, you know, that was one of the things we wanted to do a year ago. Uh, we wanted to upgrade the, the receiver position. Uh, we're bringing in some new linemen as well. But when you start talking about the receiver position, you know, we signed two guys, uh, Terrence Horn and um, Alex Cariba. Those guys are uh, pretty good ball players. They're coming from Division One programs, and uh, they were productive there. And we expect the same thing here. And it gives us uh, uh, some speed. You know, we want to make sure that uh, this year guys can't just pack the box and anticipate the run game as much. So now we'll be able to spread some folk out and score a lot of points. And now I want to talk about your favorite position, and that's defense, because I know you're a defensive guy. And I was looking at the at the depth chart, and Kalen Allen and Tayshawn Taylor at linebacker, I mean, you guys are stacked right there. Are you guys going to maybe rely on linebackers even more this year, this fall? Well, you know, there are two All-Americans. There are two All-Conference guys. They're definitely expected to be leaders, and I think they're doing show that this spring with their leadership roles. But, you know, believe it or not, Freddie Johnson is a kid that we signed back in 19 that played a little bit as a freshman on special teams. He's a pretty good ball player. So, again, you know, we have to make sure that we got some quality guys that will come in and, and back those guys up. So we feel good about the linebacking uh, core, obviously, and we've upgraded our defensive line. We got some size this year. You know, two years ago or two seasons ago, you know, we had to do a lot of games and stunts to kind of keep people honest. But then it caught up with us late in the season because people were just running the ball straight down our throat and pounding us. Well, you know, we changed that a little bit. We, we added Christian Cologne and Dontrell um, 
Barkley. So now we're talking about some guys, 6'3", 6'4", 300 plus pounds that can count. You know, we don't have to do a whole bunch of gaming and stuff. We can just line up and clog up those holes and keep people off our linebackers. So now we can depend on a Tayshawn and a Kalen Allen. And I know back in the, the, the backfield, defensive backfield, Josh Flowers coming back is huge for you because I, I think he's so underrated and I, I expect him to be all CIAA this fall. I mean, how excited are you that he's back? Well, that's, that's a plus. You know, um, we, we, we felt we had a chance. And then when he came in and said he wanted to come back, that made life on the back end a lot easier. But we had some guys, you know, Deontay Jones, he was, uh, he was ineligible a year ago. He's eligible now. He's coming back. Of course, you know, uh, we had Jaden Wellington who got a lot of playing time. So believe it or not, we have a veteran group. And, and, you know, the difference in, and this is just my opinion here, the difference in this secondary as opposed to last year, you, the last time we played, every time an in interception, it was only two people, right. Skin right. Man or either, uh, Josh. I don't think right. that's going to be the case. Right. I really think, you know, hey, Josh is going to be in a position where he probably won't leave the conference in, pit, in the interception because he'll be going up, you know, week in and week out against the opposition's best player. So hopefully with what he's shown a year ago, they won't throw at him as much. And then he'll challenge the other guys. But we've got some guys, you know, Elijah Banks, he's a local kid that transferred in from Catawba. He's shown well. Uh, of course, Nyreek Smith is our, one of our future guys at that position at the corner. So we're going to be pretty big at the corner position. We'll average about six foot. And then we got some guys, you know, that's coming in and shown, you know, uh, J- Justin Fleming has shown well as a safety. And then we also had uh, Jalen Gillette, who's done extremely well. He came from Vance and won a state championship. He's very competitive. So we feel real good about the secondary. It is a veteran group. It's just it's not a veteran group that's been tested because they haven't played a lot of games. And I know you, you're going into the summer now. What was the most disappointing thing with, with having to stop because of COVID? I mean, you had to tell the kids, but it, really it's just another bump in the road because we've been going through this for you know a year now. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing was, you know, we stopped the week of the spring game. Yeah. I think at that point, everybody got excited, was ready to go. And two, you know, one of the things we we, we we included some special teams, but I wanted to get in that last week just a little more special teams. Of course, the playing aspects of it, but with Dom being down, that was going to probably change it anyway. But the plan moving forward would have been to make sure we had a little more special team. We did have a chance to see the kickers get it, go at it, you know, and compete. And uh, we're, we're happy and pleased with those guys. And uh, I got another kicker coming in as well. So we're, we're not going to stop this recruiting process because we're trying to do a, a makeover so that we're competitive from day one all the way through. When can you guys get back in the weight room and stuff like that in the spring? I know they only have about a month left of school, correct? Yeah. Well, normally here, you know, historically, once we got done with spring ball, we kind of backed off the athletics part so we can finish strong in the classroom. And we'll continue to do that. And the guys have done exceptionally well in the classroom. We're very proud of that. But we also have the plan for them to be here this summer. So it, now we're waiting to see, per the, the school, the university, how we're going to do summer school. Are they going to do it virtual or we're going to be half and half, whatever the case may be? Because what we'll try to do then is get a lot of guys to hang around and stay in town, work some summer jobs or whatever, and then we'll lift during the day. Because I remember back in 19, going into that 19 uh, fall, you had about 30 kids that stayed around, and that, that was huge. Yeah, I, I believe it was. I really do. I just think, you know, with that team, we just were, believe it or not, we just we didn't have a whole bunch of depth. So when guys got hurt, it kind of showed. So this year we're trying to make sure that we're bringing in a lot of guys at certain positions where we did get injured at a year ago, or two years ago, excuse me, and we have depth there. And then if we can get them together over the course of the summer and kind of bring this thing together full circle, I love our chances. And one more thing, Robert, what is going to be maybe the key thing as you go into this fall? I guess there's still some doubt whether, you know, we can play games and all that. I mean – we're hopeful that, you know, vaccines are, are getting done. But what, what's maybe the biggest key for you guys? Well, I, and, and it's interesting you said that because it's really a couple of things. Obviously, you know, I, I'll say we're going to need some luck to make sure the guys that we're counting on stay injury free. But I think our biggest thing is going to be the problem everybody else is going to have, how we're going to navigate through this COVID still written season. And, uh, you know, again, and I, and I alluded to this earlier this spring about with the shutting down for the uh, rest of the spring, it's kind of giving us an idea in the event, God forbid, but in the event we have to shut down for a week or two in season because we actually had one practice where all our linebackers were DB. So we just went seven on seven and they knew, they understood the passing game. I mean, the, the, uh, the drop responsibility. So we went a whole practice of just seven on seven and zone coverage, which now helps those guys really appreciate what they do on the back end and have a better appreciation for those linebackers in front of them. 
So uh, we, we did. We got a chance to learn a lot about each other, a lot about the game. And, uh, you know, again, our biggest thing is going to be how we navigate through the school year, through the season in terms of what we're being presented, presented with, with COVID. And I, I, I forgot about this question, too, that I want to ask you. I saw the field the other day. There's a brand new turf out there, brand new sod that was laid. And hopefully the, the race car drivers will stay off it. But how excited were you to see that field there at uh, Bowman Gray? I, I was overly impressed with how fast they got it laid and yeah. ready to go. And one of the things about it, when they do have the racing uh, season, they'll come back and restart it for us. For, so but we got a chance to ask to see what it looks like. And it looks good. I even joke one of the coaches, I say, hey, look, let's wait till nighttime, turn the lights on, take a picture, and let's send those cards off to kids so now they can see what type of stadium we have. Right, right. Well, that sounds good. Well, Robert, I appreciate the time. And uh, you guys have a good summer. And hopefully uh, we'll see you this fall. Sound like a winner. See you soon, John. Thanks.